Welcome to another edition of um, Information Communication Technology. Uh, it's a unit uh, in the School of Computing and Informatics. It's, uh, today it's a lecture on the introduction of computing and understanding about uh, both hardware and uh, software and the application and why we use computers. So today's topic, um, our today's objective we want to define the term computer and discuss the four basic computer operations, which are the input, process, output, storage. Uh, also, we need to define about uh, data and information, identify differences between desktop computers, note, notebook computers, and mobile devices, explain the primary components of computers and the use, and describe the use of hard disk, flash memory, optical disk, and other storage media. And lastly, our objective is to explain the computer software and explain the, uh, explain the difference between uh, the system software and the application software. So, when the term computer comes in your mind, the first thing you think about it's an electronic device, yes. But before defining an electronic device, you have to know that computer came or was delivered from the word computing, meaning calculation, or uh, making calculation via calculator. So computer, before the introduction of the four major components, we had a big, a big calculator that just did the arithmetic uh, operations. So how do you define a computer or what device qualifies to be a computer? So a computer, the first thing, it's an electronic device operating under the control of instructions stored in its own memory that can accept data through input, process the data according to the specified rules and process, produce results in form of output, and store the results, uh, the results in the storage for future use. Just remember the storage we store uh, information, but uh, once you store information and it takes a while or you process more, it becomes knowledge. So things to note, we have the term uh, data, information, and knowledge. But before that, anything that qualifies to be a computer has to, to be an electronic device, yes, and has to have uh, uh, to be under operating under control of instructions, which is a software, and ha should have its own memory that can accept data, data, and also process data through the uh, CPU, through the CPU or the processor, and produce information in, uh, in form of output and store uh, the information in form of knowledge. So, what are the four basic uh, operations of a computer? The first one, is to input data. How do you input in, uh, uh, data in a computer? You use um, keyboards, you use cameras, you use uh, scanners, there's so many. So data, you input them using uh, the input devices, which in case you can uh, note, that's a hardware or it's a physical device. So the next operation that a computer does, it processes. It processes information. It processes, it processes data, sorry, not information. So once the information leaves the, uh, the input device, it goes to the processor for processing. And then later it goes to the output, which um, translates the processed uh, data to human readable language. So 
the last uh, basic operation is storage. A computer must store uh, the processed uh, data into knowledge. And we have various types of uh, storage devices, which include uh, primary uh, storage uh, devices, and also we have the secondary uh, storage uh, devices. This term we'll be using it interchangeably with the memory. So uh, sometimes we'll be talking about storage, but when you go into detail, we'll be discussing about memory. But let's proceed on. We have data. We've been mentioning uh, data and information. In ICT or in information computer technology, we have two uh, two major words that we use, which are data and information. These are two different. Like an example, we have data. What's the definition of data? Data is a collection of unprocessed items, which can include text, numbers, images, audio, and video. Um, these are raw data or um, content that has no uh, meaning. So, um, an example, you can have student in an assembly ground, but you need to process them so that you know what exactly or where does each student in assembly ground goes to class or where, what exactly uh, they, they are doing in that assembly ground. So, uh, data, these are just raw facts and figures. That's how we call them, or uh, unprocessed items. The next definition of information, it conveys meaning and it is useful to people. During the output operation, the information that has been created is put into a form of uh, such as printable, uh, printed report or it can be stored in, in the computer for future use. Once the data has been processed and it is arranged to uh, to information, you have to present it to human readable um, form. And that's what uh, we are just calling, uh, it's either it can be printed or it can be placed in monitors for you to be understanding. So we have uh, two major differences, data, those are raw facts and, uh, and figures, and now we have information which is uh, uh, information which is processed data. Uh, so we go next to the components of computer. But before going there, um, recently we've been, uh, the word data has been misused mostly by you students, mostly by uh, referring to uh, internet as data. I don't think now you'll be using that term data, because data, those are raw facts and figures. So, so in your exam papers, I don't want to see people defining data as um, MBs, because uh, I had some students, uh, when you tell them to define data, they are defining it, uh, it as uh, MB. So we don't want to have such encounters. That's the real definition of information. So information. Uh, some people define it, uh, define it as uh, newspaper information. So this is, uh, as a, in case you want to be called a computer scientist, you have to be able to uh, differentiate these two uh, terms when it comes to IT. So let's go to the next, uh, or let's move on to the next uh, slide of components of a computer. We have uh, five components of a computer. When we talk about component, what makes this electronic device, right? What makes a computer for something to qualify to be called a computer? It has to have these um, five components. The first component is the input device. As uh, the definition has told us, an input device is used to insert uh, data, and then where does the data inserted in a computer proceed to? We have a processor. A processor 
um, it's uh, it's a it's a processor, but it's uh, the this is more like an acronym or the other name. It's the central processing unit. So the central processing unit or the CPU is the other word of the processor. So these names can be used uh, inter interchangeably. So we have the control unit in the process. In the processor, we have the control unit uh, and arithmetic logic unit, but I can just uh, give you a highlight about uh, what's the work for these two things. The control unit coordinates the hardware bit of the computer, and arithmetic logic unit does the arithmetic or the calculation of any instruction in a computer. The next thing, uh, or the next component, of a computer is the memory. Memory stroke the storage. The memory of a computer, it is where you store your instructions. Your instructions. Remember, all the software, anything that you want to work in a computer has to be stored in a memory. To give you a highlight or a trailer about what's a me memory, that uh, we have two major types of memory. We have the random access memory, which is called the RAM, and then we have the read-only memory, which is uh, 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 the read-only uh, read memory, which is the other type of memory. In some cases or, or in some instances, we have an extra bit, which is uh, the registers, it's classified in the memory section, and also we have the cache, cache as a type of memory. But that one we'll be discussing as we move on. But something to note, the two major types of memory we have, the RAM and the ROM. RAM, to give you just a highlight about it, it is focused on, uh, RAM is uh, focused on temporarily storing an instruction before it proceeds to the processor. So it holds uh, an instruction before it proceeds to the, process, uh, to the, to the processor. So a RAM is, can be called like a short memory. It's non-volatile. It's volatile, sorry. That means it requires power for it to operate. So when you want to increase maybe the speed or the speeds of how an instruction can be hold you increase uh, the, uh, the random access memory. Uh, but we'll be discussing further on that. The next component is the output device. Remember, all these are, all these components are working inside the system unit. Let me put it like this. Let me talk like a layman person. Inside the computer, you won't be in a position to see the processes being executed. But once uh, the process has, uh, ha, the data has been processed and it's ready to be presented to human, now the output devices come on board. An example of uh, output devices, we have the printers, we have, um, we have the monitors, right? And they, they bring the aspect of the human computer interaction. The output devices should be friendly, right? Like the speakers. Speakers, it's an example of an output device. A speaker is able to give you the audio of maybe a conversation. So once an input device, like an example, let me use the speaker and the microphone. An input, you input your voice, and it's amplified at the processor and the memory, and then the output is the speaker. And so output uh, devices are used to amplify information. So, or to present it in, um, in a human readable form. Uh, then we have the last component, which is the storage device, storage devices. Here I mentioned we have different storage devices. And when we talk about storage devices, we have the hard disk, flash disk, we have the CD-ROM, right? 
but for this generation, before uh, about 15 years ago, now in 2020, that's like 2015, we had something called the diskette, which had a memory of about five MBs, uh, five uh, mega megabytes. So you can see we are now talking about terabytes, and uh, when it comes to storage, uh, as we increase the speed of computer, we're increasing the storage capacity. But now from, for you to be a computer scientist, or for you to understand a computer, remember we have two major types of uh, computer storage devices. They are grouped into two. We have the primary and the secondary storage devices. Uh, but uh, we are going to discuss it further. So uh, we can proceed. Uh, we discuss about the input. Uh, you know, I li really love having illustrations. Uh, and input devices, remember all these are hardwares. When you talk about a hardware, these are tangible element or a physical element of a computer. These are the, ex the examples that allow you to enter data inst and instruction of of a computer. So we have the keyboard, mouse, microphone, scanner, and a web webcam. This is an example of an input device. I think the class can keep on guessing. It's the keyboard. This is a keyboard. We have different uh, types of keyboards. We have wireless keyboards. We have the touchpad. We have, there's so many quality. All those, all those are input devices. Let's proceed. We have the central processing unit. The central processing unit into brackets, the processor. The processor, my first uh, mentor when it comes to computer science uh, to, uh, used to tell us that uh, a processor is more like the brain of the computer. Uh, yeah, it's the brain, but uh, we, will, uh, we will present it on a on a, on a seminar and discuss it. I don't think it's a brain of the computer, but this is more like the, the abdominal place of where you process everything in your body. So it can't be the brain of the computer. I think it's the abdominal, uh, abdominal part of the computer. So the processor is also called the CPU, which interprets and carries out basic instructions that operate a computer. Any operations in a computer is carried out in the CPU. So we have two types of, of uh, two parts of a CPU. We have the control unit, which directs and coordinates most of the operations of the computer. So to summarize this, it coordinates all the hardware components of the computer. In terms of the input, output, it has to know that after the input, the data has to proceed to the next part, which is the processor. So it coordinates all the, uh, all the operations of the computer. Then we have a very, uh, uh, the second part, which is the arithmetic logic unit. And I'm sure most of you hear about arithmetic and they think about calculus. So today we're not talking about calculus. The processor uh, will, uh, help you to resolve everything about arithmetic. So the arithmetic logic unit resolved all the challenges of the arithmetic and calculations. So for those guys who, who did not like, um, who did not like mathematics, this is your hero, the arithmetic logic unit. It, it does all the operations in, in, in the mathematics. So. This is a sample of how a CPU looks like and uh, a very important thing, something to note that anything that is too good, is not, it doesn't look all that beautiful. So what does, that, does it tell you? Never ignore such an important element of, of, um, of the computer. So CPU is very, very important. Let's go to the next element, which is called the memory. Memory consists of electronic components that store instruction, are waiting to be executed, and data needed by the instructions. So it stores instructions. And these instructions, you go to the basics about uh, computer and instruction, these are softwares. 
or programs. So they hold an instruction before it is executed and we separate them uh, into two, two main ones. Don't misquote me, we have two main ones. We have the random access memory which hold the instruction before it proceeds to the processor. So an example, you've, uh, you've instructed uh, uh, an application to, to access maybe something on your computer. It first goes to the random access memory in case there's space, it holds there, it, uh, and then it proceeds to the processor. So it stores the information temporarily. And the higher your access memory, the faster your machine is likely to be. Uh, the access, the random access memory, this is a sample of a uh, random access memory. Uh, and the next thing is read only memory. This mostly, it stores information permanently in a computer. It stores information permanently in a computer, I do not have, uh, and an example of a read-only memory, it's a flash disk, because it doesn't require power. It stores information permanently. We have the hard disk, which stores information um, uh, permanently. The two difference between these two, it's very, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very unique. Read uh, random access memory, you can increase it to increase the speed of the processing. But when you increase the read-only memory without considering the read-only memory, there will be a challenge. There will be a challenge of speed. In most cases, you student, in case you missed your basic about uh, computers, it's called hanging. But uh, uh, in computer, we talk about interrupts and missing. When there's a miss in the execution, never use the word hanging in my class or in my presence, so we'll be talking about interrupts and, uh, and uh, other terms. So these are, at your free time, make sure you work uh, in checking the difference between the random access memory and read-only memory. Uh, but uh, before we proceed, uh, I want to mention more about um, uh, the memories. For you to be in a position to, to, um, to use this memory, you have to know the capacity of the central processing unit. You have to know the capacity of, uh, the, capacity of the central processing unit so that you don't increase the RAM and your processor uh, has no capacity to do that. So let's proceed uh, to the next, uh, sorry for that, to the next slide, which is the output devices. We have the output devices. The output devices are hardware components that convey information to one or more people. Output devices include printers, speakers, headphones, interactive whiteboards, monitors, and there's so many. So for the output devices, they present information to the user. So the more information, the, the better the output device, the good the user might say the computer is. So an output device is a very key element because it presents uh, information to people and it all depends uh, on how you you do it, but uh, that can be explained with this diagram. You know, I love uh, being a bit practical in everything. This is an image where you can understand how a personal computer works or, or how once you place power, how it operates. So we have on this side, we have all these class. I'm sure you can understand. We have the keyboard, we have the mouse, we have we have the scanner, we have other input devices. All these are input devices, right? So it gets data, they go to the memory. I'm sure you're guessing what memory we're talking about. We have the 
first it goes to it, it might be it might go to either memory the the ram or the rom so depending on where it is in case the instruction or the software is within the computer you have to access the the rom or the read only memory so that the instruction is carried to the ram and then to the processor so we have the memory here we know we, we have it so we have this memory is divided into two the rom and the ram but i told you earlier we have also something called the registers still in this memory the registers and also we have the cache or cache cache depending on the village you come from so when we talk about cache in case you have you've been using an, a software for for a long period of time or frequently that instruction is stored in a cache which is accessible a bit fast and uh, in most like um, in the browser an example of a browser let me give you a loose example so that you understand what we mean by uh, cache memory in a browser sometimes you you can type uh, maybe let's use google google.com and later you will uh, you want to access the same website which is google.com and once you type google it is the google pop-up appears that's an example how uh, cache memory is used so it stores your most frequently instructions there remember cache uh, memory is slightly expensive so the more you want your memory to to have cache memory the more expensive your computer will be so memory is very very key in in this so you can see between the memory and the central processing unit this arrow is pointing that the 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 information can either be going in the cpu or going back to to the cpu once the, C, the data is processed, uh, is stored here, it goes to the CPU for processing and then it can be stored back to the memory. So RAM mostly holds the data for processing on its way. It's more like the stage, right? The stage uh, we are talking about, those guys who try use uh, Matatu or public means. You go to uh, Matatu, you wait for uh, for 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 Matatu, that's the RAM. So you wait for, for a Matatu in the RAM, and then you don't stay there. You get into a Matatu, so you, you proceed to the CPU, hits the Matatu, it processes you to your destination, and then after that, once you're done with what you're doing, it takes you back to the memory where you stay. Mostly it's your, it's your house, right? So that, that's not complete. Still, when you reach in your house, you say, okay, fine, I'm back. What did you achieve for today? So how do you present the, everything you've been doing here? You present it in the output devices, which is the monitor. We have, sorry for that. Um, we have, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, we have, we have the monitor, we have the printer, speakers, output, and other output devices. So this is a simple illustration of how you can, uh, you can explain how the workings of a computer and the components of a computer. Remember, in an exam time, you can be told to illustrate. So when you illustrate, don't draw a physical computer showing me a keyboard, a, a mouse, and a CPU. You you really score badly. This is how you 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 present the working of a computer. So we can proceed to the next slide, which is the software. Remember what we've been discussing all along. The components; those are the physical or the hardware, the physical part of the computer. The five components are the. Uh, are the physical part of the computer and then we have to go to the second part which is the software so what's a software a software 
for someone who has ne who hasn't paid school fees to to be in school, they know a software is just something that you cannot uh, you cannot touch. But a software is also called a program. It consists of a series of related instruction organized for a common purpose that tells the computer what tasks to perform and how to perform them. So a software is a set of instructions. It instructs a computer on when to do a specific task and how to, to execute that task. When you talk about execution, it's not killing. It's to carry out. Those are computer terms that we use. Execution is not killing. So the software um, instructs how things are done in a computer. We have two major types of software. We have the system softwares and the application software. So we can start with uh, the two major ones. The system software consists of programs that control the operations of the computer and its devices. In rather, in, uh, in a short form, the system software coordinates the hardware parts, coordinates the hardware part of the computer. The five components, they are all coordinated by the system software. software. We have two types of system softwares. We have the operation, the operating system, the operating system, the operating system, which is a set of programs that coordinates all the activities among the computer hardware devices. And then we have the utility program that allows a user to perform a, a type of task usually related to managing a computer, its devices, or its program. For example, you can use a utility program to ban digital content. Right, let me just explain about, about the system software. Once uh, you use your mobile phone and you turn the one or zero button, the on and off button, the first thing you see is maybe you're starting an example, Android, in case you're using a desktop machine, you see Windows starting, or you see Linux starting, iOS starting. That's an example of an operating system. It coordinates or it checks that, wow, we have the input devices intact. The CPU is working. The RAM is available. Uh, we can proceed on and check the, the, CP, the, the storage devices are available. The operating system detects when the computer is not functioning well or when maybe the RAM is not working. So the operating system operates the overall coordination of activities uh, of a computer. What about a utility program? Yes, you might have the physical uh, component. An example. You have installed the operating system of your, of, of your computer, but you still need another program for that uh, device to, to function. An example when you talk about this is when you talk about um, the sound can. The sound can. You have the speakers on, but when you don't have the sound card uh, drivers, it won't, uh, the machine won't really uh, so, uh, perform the, the task of the audio. So another example of a utility software, as the term s uh, talk about is, an example is uh, antivirus, that's an example of uh, a utility program. So, and uh, for you to be in a position to, to really understand utilities program, they are more like electricity in your house. You can do without electricity in your house, but still perform. So utility, um, a machine can perform that. The next thing is the application software. An application software uh, consists of program designed to make users more productive and a system with personal tasks. 
These include personal information management, note-taking, project management, accounting, accounting management, computer-aided design, desktop publishing, and so forth. So application software can be say to be a software or an instruction that is helping uh, that is helping a user to do a specific task a specific task when it they are very specific so an application uh, software does a specific task so an example we have the word processing which is used to create edit and format print documents and then we have another example which is called uh, the presentation software. It allows uh, users to create visual audio aids for presentation to communicate ideas, messages, and other information to a group of, st uh, of people like what I'm doing. This is an example of a presentation software. Then we have spreadsheet uh, softwares which allows users to organize data in laws and columns and also help in calculation of the data. We have the last part, which there are so many. We have the database, which helps in storage and uh, retrieval of information in, in a computer. So all these computer, uh, all these uh, application software, we will be focusing, we will be working um, specifically on these four, these four, application softwares. So you have to be very conversant with uh, these uh, softwares. Like an example for this class, we'll work on word processing using Microsoft Word. We'll use uh, the presentation, which is the PowerPoint. And then we have the spreadsheet software. And then we will have spreadsheet with Excel. We will work with Excel. Then we will have the database uh, which we are going to focus on access. But as we move on, we'll be working more on advanced software, but because this is just an introduction, you're going to work on that. So um, that's the end uh, of uh, lesson one. And uh, we'll be, next time we'll be focusing on uh, memory and how to apply memory, uh, s different types of memory in computers. So thank you very much. Till next time. See you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.